The book of Acts is the true record, written and preserved by God, of people who went out and lived their lives building brick by brick a level of trust in a God who is providentially preparing everything before them. And here's how he does it. He goes before them wherever they're going to go and he prepares and provides what they need before they know they need it. Providence has become kind of like a junk drawer term for people. They use it and most people have no idea what it means. Whenever God does something good, they say, oh, it's providence. It doesn't work like that. Providence is a Latin word. It comes from the Latin, and it's made up of two root words. Look on the screen. I showed you this a few weeks ago. Time for review. Providence is made up of pro, which means before, and vide, which means to see. In other words, the word comes from to see before and provide. Listen to me, everybody in the room. Anybody who's going through something, listen close. Right at this very moment, God is providing things for you that you don't even know you need yet. That's the God that Jesus reveals. I'm asking you if you believe the God that Jesus reveals. A God of providence. A God who is actually preparing and providing things for you that you don't know you're going to need maybe in the next few minutes. The book of Acts is the true record written and preserved by God of people who went out and lived their lives building brick by brick a level of trust in a God who is providentially preparing everything before them. And here's how he does it. He goes before them wherever they're going to go and he prepares and provides what they need before they know they need it. Church, listen. The apostles didn't believe in chance. They didn't believe in a what if? They believe that God prepares and provides everything. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia. Now Paul's looking for a place to preach. Having been, say the word church, forbidden. forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mycenae, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. That may be the clearest written expression of the providence of God in the whole Bible. God is actively opening and closing doors for all of his people. He is not a spectator watching the affairs unfold. He protected Paul. Here's what we know. We don't know why the Spirit said, Paul, don't go there. But what most scholars agree from reading the rest of the New Testament is that he protected him from something harmful that would have happened had he gone into Asia. If we were to look at Paul's life and say, all right, this guy did amazing things. Let's learn from Paul's life. What did he believe about how providence, God's providing a path for me. What did he believe about providence and protection? Like, is God going to protect me from everything? What did Paul believe? Let's try to find one summary statement for his whole life about those two things, providence and protection. Well, I found it, no question. And it happens to come as his very last words to Timothy in the very last letter ever written by Paul a few months before his head was chopped off by Nero. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. Time out. Does that sound like an absent God or God that was right there next to him in every prison cell? He continues. So that through me, here's Paul's purpose, through me, the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So Paul has a purpose. Look, look, look. Paul has a purpose. And God is doing his will through Paul as his hands and feet. Now look. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. God protected me because God has a purpose that he's carrying out and he's doing it through me. So Paul had seen this through his life. Now let's ask him, hey Paul, what did you conclude about God and his providence in your life? Here's his conclusion. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed 
and bring me safely into His heavenly kingdom. To Him be the glory forever and ever. And say it, church. Amen. Amen. What Paul concluded was that God would not let anything happen to him. Listen, that did not coincide with God's perfect plan for Paul's life. So passing by Mycenae, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. There's Paul's permission to proceed. He got the green light he was looking for. Now listen, because this is really important. Something happened there in between verses 8 and 9, where Paul is is on his way. God gave him the, no, don't go there, closed door. So now Paul's looking for an open door, and he comes to this place called Troas, and you know Paul. He's like, let's go there and preach about Jesus. Something happened there that you don't see written in the text. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Something happened in Paul's heart and mind where he did not have peace of mind to go into Troas. Kind of like a a stop. Something's not right about this and I don't feel settled. Now you might say, Bible teacher, I don't see that in there. Prove it. So glad. Good job, Bereans. Now it's my job to prove it to you. Paul wrote about this exact event in a letter. This exact event. And he gives us some details. Check it out. In his letter to the Corinthians, he says this. When I came to Troas, talking about the same event, to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was open for me in the Lord, so he's got the green light to go into that city, my spirit was not at rest because I didn't find my brother Titus there. So time out. He's got a green light, but something in his spirit was like, I just don't have the peace of mind that I should have to go forward. I don't think God is telling me that this is the way to go. Because my brother Titus is there and I'm not going to leave him behind. So Paul had a vision about this guy in Macedonia. Look what he concludes. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God. Oh, look, church. Thanks be to God who in Christ, say this word nice and loud. Always. How often? Always. Always leads us in triumphal Procession, that's a great definition of providence, by the way. He always leads you to where the victory is that God has already provided. And through us, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. Listen, God will always lead his people. You, Paul, Timothy, everyone. Always lead his people by providence right to the precise place where those people need an aroma of Him. If you don't have an intimate relationship with God, this doesn't work. For example, if you go to Ashley after church today and we're separated, or you come to me and you say, hey Luke, I know Ashley's not here, but how do you think Ashley would respond if if I asked this? I'm pretty sure, about 99%, I can give you the right answer. Do you know how? It's because I know her. I know her so intimately that we share the deepest, darkest parts of our mind with each other and hearts with each other. I know Ashley. The same thing must be true with you and God. If you're going to hear his voice and distinguish it from other voices, knowing this is a closed door, this is an open door, you must have an intimate relationship where you say, I know God. I know how he dealt with Paul. I know how he dealt with Abraham. I know how he dealt with Moses. I know how he dealt with Jesus. And I know how he deals with me. Excuse me. That's the only way to hear accurately from God. Church, I could go on forever, and I'm going to, which is why this is going to take me four weeks. But today, I'm done. I hope you'll come back. We're just getting started. This chapter is so cool, and there's so many great evidences of God's providence, and I want to share with you the principles for your life. Today, I want to leave you with Augustine, okay? Listen to Augustine, then I'll pray, and we'll close. He says, trust the past to God's mercy, the present to God's love, and the future to God's providence. Hey friends, Pastor Luke just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you for watching the video. If you found it to be edifying and encouraging, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. For more videos and sermons like this or to watch the full-length sermon, you can find it right here on our YouTube channel or by visiting our website, 
www.hopeoflbi.com.